say it. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hello. Sunday Tea Book. I'm your co-host, Phil, co -host. with my co-host, Jen, and I promised a friend I would start today's episode with an FM voice, but I'm going to go back to normal right now. Did that freak you out a bit? I, I like that. I, I like that. I, I wonder if you can do the whole episode like that. No, absolutely not. I think it would just start to annoy people, and they might start to leave the episode. Anyway, guys, if you like the FM voice, let us know. <laughs> Um, hey, Bruna. Hello, Jan. Ahoy. And uh, hola, Igor. All right? Try and get everybody hello. Whoa. Hello in the native language. If I, I don't even know if I was right. Just <laughs> trying to have some fun here today. Mm -hmm. Got a great episode in store for you today. Yes. Talking about uh, Longjin and Biluochun. That's right. And speaking of Longjin. We are. What is that? We have it wrapped up in a plastic bag to keep it super fresh because I got it out quite early. Right. Oh, so I can actually. Um, some, uh... We can show the uh, show the yeah? Instagram people, okay. and I'll actually flick over here for the folks on YouTube. They can right, get a good so old, good old close up of the tea. Right. Oh, can you see this one? Yeah, it's hard to show on Instagram. So, folks on Instagram, hello and welcome. But we are going to be continuing this on YouTube, so you mm. might want to dive over there because those folks are getting a really beautiful look at those lovely, soft yellow green leaves. Mm, nice. Nice light in there. Yes, I went to the window and got a little <laughs> shot of the tea and the natural light. So you got a really good look at it. Hey, Josh, mm -hmm. how you doing today? Hello. So guys, welcome back to Sunday Tea Book episode 1515. Sunday Tea Book is all about bringing you guys great, high quality tea information that is really hard to find in English. It generally comes from um, books, articles or papers that are written in Chinese and maybe either not translated or sort of the translation leaves a lot to be desired. So what we do here is we sit down and we go, we pull the book up onto the screen or the paper. We go over it with you and you guys help us translate it. And this mm. is super helpful because when we get behind the language and the culture of tea, it's kind of like a, like a 10 X on the learning experience rather than just getting a good book and getting that information, you're actually participating in the process of, figuring out why this is confusing or why this got, why it's hard to describe. What are the details that underpin that? Mm -hmm. Super great learning experience. Also super fun. Chip in with your comments, guys. As I said on Instagram, folks, I'm going to bring that book up. Uh, the, bo the book's going to come up on YouTube, so you got to pop over to YouTube to continue. We're just doing a little intro on Instagram. Yes. And uh, continue. <coughs> Sorry. We're continuing the book, uh, China Tea by my mom, Jenny Wu. Mm -hmm. So it's a great introduction book to Chinese tea. It touches in almost every aspect of yeah. Chinese tea laying a really intro. solid uh, foundation for future exploring. So if you are just new to Chinese tea, this is a great series for you to start after this. Mm. Most of the things you will encounter, you already heard of. You won't have too much of confusion of what they are or yes. what's the uh, uh, origin of yeah. different teas. This book is so great. It's great if you're getting into Chinese tea. If you're brand new, this is a great book. But if you've been into Chinese tea for a while, as uh, we've pointed out a couple of times going through it, it's still a great book because it kind of takes you back and makes you reflect on some of the very practical but it kind of to or, I think it's yes. more like organizing because uh, yes. we have been hearing different things from different sources right. and uh, different versions of calling things or different explanations. While well, this book kind of uh, uh, and our uh, Sunday tea book kind of is the process to help you mm. organize all the things together and uh, clear up some confusion. And uh, from this week on, we are gonna. Okay, actually from last week on, we're going to dive into different tea categories oh, yeah. and uh, uh, this week and the next few weeks, we're talking about specific teas. Yes, so really exciting that's period. That's really fun. Super meaty and interesting stuff mm. as we go over the tea topics, diving into specific teas and where, where possible, we'll try and line up the tea we're drinking with the teas we're talking about. Yes. So the format for today is uh, China tea is, a, is written in Chinese, but it is already translated in English, but the translation is a little bit iffy. So I'm going to pull up the, uh, pull that up onto the screen. So again, for Instagram folks, jump on over to YouTube so you can follow along with that. And I'm going to read out exactly what's in the book. And then I'm going to share with you what I think it means. Or if I completely can't figure it out, I'm just going to say that you guys can help me out a bit. Jen is then going to, let us know 
what the Chinese said because she's read the Chinese and has got that and if something was completely missed she'll make sure we don't miss it. Now this is a really cool thing we've been done. Kind of upgrade the experience for you guys. So the mm. translation always goes on to our website. We used to do it after, now we're doing it before. So if you want to pull up the translation on our website, the link is down in the description. So pull it up. You can follow along with the finished translation as well to even further enhance your uh, sort of uh, reading experience and learning experience, all right? So guys, uh, please, Give us a, a kill it. <laughs> oh, I messed up the YouTube cliche. Click subscribe <laughs> and hit the notify bell so you know whenever we go live or mm -hmm. post uh, new videos about our tea travels, how to brew, all kinds of great stuff. Really helps out the channel. Oh, one more thing. I have got, uh, we've also introduced a monthly, a monthly sort of uh, presentation, presentation right? learning experience, a fun tea time with you guys. Mm -hmm. October 22nd, I'm going to be doing uh, Exploring the World of Chinese Tea, another great overview of Chinese tea covering a little bit of history, mm -hmm. a little bit about all the tea types, a little bit about teaware. So um, definitely click the notify bell. So that's going to be another live session. Would love to see you guys there October 22nd. That's a Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's going to be a lot of fun. So, mm -hmm. um, and you'll see some social media. So if you could share those social media around with your friends, that would really help the channel grow and help uh, people discover a great source for Chinese tea knowledge. If I do toot my own horn myself, beep beep. <laughs> All right, so Instagram, cool. I'm gonna say bye-bye. That's right. Be sure to join us on YouTube. Yep, join us on YouTube. We'll see you over there. And thanks for dialing in there, Ian Kreisberg and... Which? Should All I you guys on Instagram. Should I my top shelf long jing or my bi luo chun or should I be cheeky and make some ho kui? Wow. Cheeky monkey. <laughs> top shelf long jing. I don't know because we're drinking long jing today. I think that's a good question. What's your mood? Yes. Today, I don't know about Ottawa, uh, sorry, Toronto, but Ottawa is a beautiful, mm. beautiful. Full sun. Full sun. And finally, this autumn has been pretty wet. So... I don't know. I like that roastiness of the Longjing. Mm. So I just feel like Longjing. I'm so happy I chose this tea. It really matches the <laughs> feeling. I love his panic. Oh, the panic. Oh, thank you. I'll just hold it and wait forever to see if he would have spotted it. Oh, that is so nice. <laughs> it's got that nutty. Mm. And now I really? have the word that chestnutty. Chestnutty. <laughs> New word. <laughs> I was always defaulting to soy nut because it does have a soy texture. You gotta have to mm. have that chestnut experience mm. or something. Fresh. That is really uplifting too. Really help right. um, kind of stave off the onset of autumn. Although the roastiness help me, helps me accept it. It has more like a starchy roasty rather than soil, mm. soil being roasty. That's why I feel like uh, I would go with on Chestnut. the other hand, he's full, he's full overcast. So you might want to oh. change your tea selection. No. Annoying Ontario. Yeah. That means it's going to be overcast for us. All mm -hmm. right, guys. So I am going to uh, pop over to the book. And we are going to get started with Long Jin while we sip on. Long this Jin. is a uh, Ming Qian, not Long Jin. Mm. And oh, we're yeah. going to explain why okay. we named this. Okay. Well, but we're going to okay. make you but wait. But not now. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. All oh, right. And if you guys, uh, what are the teas are you guys drinking? Mm. Yeah, share Aside with us. Aside from Josh, who's still deciding, who will, yes. I'm sure, let us know once you Surprise do decide. Surprise us. Okay? <laughs> yes. Uh, feel free to tag us on Instagram or even send us a DM because we always share with you guys the leaves, the looks, the liquors yeah. of the tea we're drinking. So we'd love to see what. Love to see it. What's in your cup? You bet. Mm. All right, and here is the book. Oh, right. I always try to uh, start it on the cover and I always somehow seem to end up with the book somewhere else. All right. So. So here we are in the green tea section, guys, as we mentioned, we're going to be here for a little while because we're not going to rush through it. This book takes some time and goes over a, f a few of the famous teas and it looks like a long list, right? And I kind of cheekily said a few, but there are so many green teas. This really is just a few of the many green teas that are out there, but there's some of the sort of kind of got to know them, of course, and starting with none other than Westlake Dragonwell. Let me see if I can, my mouse is a little bit sensitive today. Westlake Dragonwell. 
Brewing difficulty, easy to learn, difficulty, three stars out of five, best tea tasting season, winter. I really love that little breakdown there. I, I, I don't know, I didn't notice it right away, but when yeah. I noticed it, I was like, that is so cool. All right, here we are. Speaking of tea, many people firstly think of Westlake Dragonwell. Emperor Tianlong had been to the south of the Yangtze River for six times, while he went to the Dragonwell area four times to see the tea picking, tasted tea, and composed poetry in person. Emperor Tianlong had awarded the 18 tea bushes of Hangzhou Shifang Mountain royalty tea. For a time, Hangzhou Shifang became the focus, with delicately beautiful mountain and clear water, which make people scramble for going there. Scroll down a little bit. New Dragonwell Tea, Dragonwell Spring. Dragonwell, the name of tea, scenery, well, and village, not only the price of tea, but the social status of scenery here had increased since Dragonwell Tea had been elected to the new 10 Westlake sites. Dragonwell Tea has always been <laughs> particular about the picking time. The earlier, the better. Among all, the best one is picked before tomb sweeping day, which is also called Ming Tian Tea. Ming Tian not long Jin? Ming Tian Tea? No coincidence there. Picking focus on the tender and integrity. Usually, just pick one tender bud, which is called Heart of Lotus. Pick a bud and a leaf. While the leaf looks like a flag, the bud looks like a gun, so which is called Flag Gun. For a bud and two leaves, which is like the tongue of the Stellaria ulignosa, and so it is called. Here endeth the lesson. <laughs> yeah, that just sounded really biblical. All right. Let me see. I'm going to do these last two and then we'll come back, guys. Appreciation always before drinking. The character of dry tea. Dragonwell tea has flat, tender leaves, uniform color and shape, same width, green-yellow color, smooth, a bud and a leaf, or a bud with two leaves. The bud is in the leaf and shorter than three centimeters. The bud leaf is even in flower shaped with bases and fragment, fragments. Dragonwell has a delicate fragrance while the fake one has grass flavor with more bases and feels rough. Enjoy while tasting. The color of Dragonwell soup is yellow green and bright. It tastes delicious and refreshing, which makes people feel at ease and pleasant. Its fragrance is fresh and mellow, but not too strong. While slowly slipping, you will experience the amazing feeling. And just get a little picture of that. All right, back up to the top. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and have a sip of tea. Ah, let's see what folks... Can we... It's kind of... I want to see... I noticed somebody's having an herba mate, I think. Yeah. Yes, Fernanda is having yerba mate. Mm. All right. Okay, guys. So let's re let's unpack this a bit. So mm. Westlake Dragonwell. Um, I already mentioned the little top parts here that I really uh, I kind of love this. Each of the teas has this sort of brewing difficulty and the tasting season, which I think is just cool. And it's nice to know that Lomjin is pretty easy to learn. Um, as far as Parawan goes, I found it was mostly okay, but um, mostly okay. It's a little mm -hmm. bit of background, but in the 18 tea bush, there, there's this tea bush award comment. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, um, here is the, I think like you mentioned, this paragraph is in general totally understanding. Like if you read it, you get the gist of it. Yes. The emperor go there, says those are the kind of royalties and stuff. I just want to uh, pick out a little bit of uh, uh, some uh, inaccuracy in the English as a side note. It's not quite like a tea related. Okay. So uh, here it says... Uh, I think uh, basically uh, mentioning the name, right? In English, it's a West Lake Dragonwell. Mm -hmm. This is a translation of this tea name word by word. Mm. And we prefer to keep that in the Chinese way, which usually, like Xihu right. is the location. Mm -hmm. It's located in Hangzhou, uh, which is in Zhejiang province. Mm. 
Longjing is the name. So we, at least uh, we keep the um, name to right. the Chinese side. Mm. Sihu Longjing, literally yes. Westlake Dragon Wall. Yes. And then talking about the uh, Emperor Qianlong, uh, he is the emperor of the last dynasty, Qin dynasty, in the mid Qin dynasty, mm -hmm. the, the peak of that dynasty. And he has been, here it says, to the south of Yangtze River. Uh, this, in Chinese, we have a term Jiangnan. It usually means that uh, uh, Jiangsu Zhejiang, the currently known as Jiangsu Zhejiang, that right. area. Right. And, uh, to say that the south of Yangtze River is not technically right. I that, see. that kind of region is in that kind of region. It's the, the river here doesn't traditionally refer to Yangtze River. Okay. There are several versions of where the strict line where is. That's but south line. roughly, right. you know, it's nowadays we talk about Jiangsu Zhejiang okay. provinces. That was not okay. noticeable as a sort of as a Western person. Yeah, and it's the... a term. If you talk mm. to Chinese, you say Jiangnan. People know, oh, you were mentioned in that area. Pretty big region, like kind mm, of. It's, uh, yes, the east coast, uh, in the middle part, the belly right. part of the uh, east coast. And um, so that 18 bushes are in a temple called uh, Hu Gong Miao. So in front of there, if you go visit, they still have that uh, 18 dishes in a, a dishes. <laughs> 18 bushes. Someone's hungry. <laughs> Kind of a, a, you know, have a little garden-ish right. feeling. They're not the original ones, okay? Those mm -hmm. are small tea bushes. They they come and go, right. kind of they dies, and they got replaced they're, for tourists. They're not your thousand-year-old kind of bushes. Yeah, yeah, but they, they have to find some oldish bush for mm -hmm. people who visit to see it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Shifeng Mountain, and Shifeng Mountain in Hangzhou, right? That's pretty much what it means. It's basically saying it, this tea, Dragon Well, uh, Longjing got attention right. uh, because of the emperor. Yeah, and I found that interesting. So it's kind of like, like it says here, for a time, uh, Shifeng became the focus. So it's kind of like he created little tea craze around this because Yeah, he now of, we have a you know, celebrity right. effect. The old times the emperor is the top celebrity, right? right? So he actually caused a little buzz around the tea. Yeah. Good for the local economy. Over 10 million followers. <laughs> so in the new Dragon Wall, new Dragon Wall tea, Dragon Wall Spring area, um, para one, I have to say, mm -hmm. my notes simply say, huh? <laughs> so Dragon Wall, the, na the name of tea, scenery, well, and village, not only the price of tea, but the social status had increased since Dragon Wall tea had been elected to the new, new 10 West Lake sites. I really... I kind of, I smell it. the first, mm. oh, that's so fresh. It's so different than the liquor smell, huh? Mm. And creamy fresh, like bright green and creamy somehow. I don't know, it doesn't sound, sound good, but it's really a beautiful, like uh, eye-opening, invigorating. Um, I love that the deep aroma. roasting flavor. It's not mm. a, like a surface, like a fire roasting, like a nuts or stuff. Mm. It's deeper. Mm. It's not as green. Right. Anyway, oh, we have lots of uh, right. comments here. Yeah, let's head over to the comments. Yeah. We'll come back to this, because I just completely was mm. confused by that pair. Right. So you're going to have to help me unpack it. So, um, Way back up to the top of right. where people are drinking tea. So sure, we've got Yerba Mate Fernandez. Igor is drinking a 2019 Fijian Baya Tsilan. Fijian. Fu probably from Fujian? Yeah. Mm. Right. And Jan, I also have some super great Taiping Ho Kui. I, I should really taste it tomorrow because of COVID circumstances. So then I have a plan for tomorrow. Mm. Oh, hope everything's okay there. Bruna, I'm having a Roy Boss. It's too late for tea here. Oh, oh. yes. Yummy. I love that kind of... Uh, that's a really yummy tea. I haven't had that in we a while. We used to have that like uh, before he discovered uh, Puar was okay to drink. We mm. used to have a road boys before. Yeah, yeah. And Johan mm. says it's late here for tea as well. Mm. Seems like he's a little bit more of a renegade though. Just have it anyway. Right. Whatever you... Just out of curiosity, where are you from? We are in Spain. Ottawa, Canada. And, here. Oh, she's from... Yeah, she's from Spain. So we're oh. in Ottawa. Oh, right. And um, yeah, so welcome. We love having folks from... Uh, 
from, from all over the world. It's super interesting to meet everybody. We've got folks from Czech Republic, Canada, US, Spain, um, sometimes some Brazil people pop on, which I love too. Mm. Super great to see you guys and thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so the word is in. Josh went with his top shelf Lom Jin. Good choice, <laughs> matches the topic perfectly, perfectly. And maybe you can switch to the Bilo Chun when we switch. <laughs> We're not switching tea, just the topic. <laughs> Only ever seem to. Igor says, uh, yeah, Igor. Br Igor is in Spain too, Bruno. That's so cool. Yo soy de Bilbao. Oh, he's from Bilbao. That's cool. There's a really cool Pat Metheny song about that town. Oh, I don't know that town. Mm. I don't really know it. I just know the song. Oh, okay. <laughs> Johan says, actually, I finished some 2008 Shupuar. Oh. Nice, nice. Bamboo stem storage. Has nice. really nice chocolate and soy sauce aroma and taste. That sounds delightful. Mm. Mm. Really nice. Is that a sh yeah shoe? You should be. That's a great right. evening tea. That's our go-to evening tea. Right. I should have touched the computer. Bruno says fun. Josh says, um, oh, he's using his homemade technique to brew. I always hate getting leaves stuck in my teeth, so I use a bombilla filtered straw for mate. Oh, cool. And Jan says he's from Czech Republic. I kind of spilled the beans on you. Sorry about that, buddy. <laughs> Josh says it completely solves the problem, but you can still drink glass tumbler, right? Grandpa style. I love filtering with my teeth. Interesting. Fujian, sorry. And I'm from south of Brazil. I, yeah, I knew Fernanda. I knew somebody was here from so, Brazil. Yeah. South Brazil. That's awesome. Welcome you guys from all over the world. It's so fun to be able to kind of hang out. Yeah. And talk about tea and find out what you're drinking and just hang out. Mm hmm. All right, so I'm going to dive back in to the, uh, this first paragraph. So the first sentence, I can kind of figure out the, and it's, again, if I'm a beginner, I don't think I can figure this out, but Dragonwell is a tea name, it's a well, it's a village, it's, a, it's, a, it's sort of an area, and, and then beyond that, uh, I'm just lost. Not only the price of tea, but the social status of the scenery here had increased. Like, what's, what's going on here? I, I, I have no idea. Help me out. I'm lost. Mm. See, that's very interesting because when I read it, I was like, oh, well, that's un understandable. I didn't know it would be like so confused. So, uh, Especially I, the new 10 lakes, West Lakes. I think that's what uh, that's when I throw just, people off. Yes. It's because uh, we have called the 10 Xihu West Lakes size, like the famous views. Uh, so they oh, are kind of like lookouts or? Not just a lookout, no. it's very specific. Like the Fumu on the West Lake or oh. some uh, sunset at a certain spot because of, because of uh, where the okay. sun is, you will see the sun fully under the bridge through the, you know, it's a very accurate moment. Right, Those right. 10 fam uh, famous uh, uh, views slash moments. Right, right. That They're like temporal lookouts. You gotta be in the right place at the right yes, time to catch these ones. Yes, and that's considered very extraordinary to see those moments. Oh, that is And cool. it's uh, historically, uh, it has a tradition. It's not uh, uh, suddenly emerged. It has been, you know, throughout time and abstract. Right. Then we had that uh, 10 views that you must see, like, you know, top trip advisor kind of thing. But now this new one is, you know, the new, uh, rec um, how should I say the recent decade mm -hmm. is more recent but uh, that's why it's just called the new 10 size oh, okay. so there's a classic the, the version and there's a newer version and uh, there's a uh, Longjing tea got in the new version so that kind of uh, is almost like a little rhyme or little poem that's easy. Like uh, imagine like a tourist agent, tourist department of Ottawa trying to uh, uh, telling people about uh, Gardino Park is a really beautiful right. trail or stuff. We have been doing a lot of trails. So uh, that, that's my uh, In fact, example. we're heading out right after this to hit another trail. So yeah. So uh, that. that's the concept. So it's more like uh, when the either the government or the people are more talking about this, the, it gets uh, launching even more modern attention. Right. Yeah, it's sort of like, a, I don't want to make it sound cheap, but it's sort of like a marketing for the area and the tea is with the area. It's kind mm -hmm. of bound together. That's right. I love the uh, temporal nature of these. So, we, you know, if we go on a trail, there's little lookouts where you can, it's always quite spectacular, but mm. I like these ones that are tied with the moon or the sun and yes. really specific season to check yes. them out. That's excellent. 
So in the next one, um, this one wasn't too bad, but there's a couple a couple trip ups here that are really tricky. Mm -hmm. First is uh, just just describing the uh, the time. I think we should talk about our, the tea we're having is also a Ming Chen, not Long Jin. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's time to share why we call it not Long Jin. Mm. And I think we should say it because it's okay. not. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, uh -huh. a big, uh, it's a more <laughs> not complicated. Is a, here is more the, subtle, more nuanced, more uh, uh, insider. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this tea is from Guizhou. Uh, the Mingqian non Longjing we're having is from Guizhou province. Because if you look at the shape, you think, oh, that's a flat. It does look like Longjing. Mm -hmm. That's why we call that Mingqian not Longjing. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we do consider SEO. However, another layer. <laughs> what? No, no, it's totally, uh, it's right? totally good, and it's like a lot of Lomjin out there is technically not quite there, right? Uh, why? Another reason, a true reason behind we call that not Lomjin is this company used to not export. How should I say? Used to ship their tea to Lomjin area for people there, mm -hmm. so that they can sell that as Lomjin. Mm -hmm. So that was their main business, which is making uh, Longjing shaped tea. Mm -hmm. And uh, a local, a local company in Longjing area will buy all of them tea and sell out to other people. So if there are some people think if you go to Longjing, you source that from. Uh, yes. uh, sorry, Xihu area, you source from there. You are having authentic. Uh, the fact, the industry fact is there's no guarantee of such thing. That's right. Yeah. So that's why we call this because this tea all times was sold as Mingtian Longjing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. in, Lo it, in uh, Xihu area. Right. And it delivers great flavor. It's a really great experience. And it's, for us, it's really about transparency, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. the company is trying to uh, make some changes because the fact is uh, they're making tea that uh, people are buying from Longjin. They're getting, they're um, buying that for much more than how the company would have originally sell it. They kind of want to make a uh, presence of them all, of their own. Like mm. we're making tea too. This tea is also drinkable. Yeah, it's not bad. Processed it's not in the because, Longjin style. Yes, it's mm. not because uh, it's not bad. It's only because it's not from that region. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so the the company is actually doing a little change, reducing right, little of transformation. Uh, transformation and trying to make our own uh, presence in the right. tea market with their real product, and not to dress up as somebody mm -hmm. else. And um, so we kind of like this. In the end, you know, it's uh, some people drink for title, we drink for the tea, and exactly. we like this tea. Uh, yeah, great. We like experience. the price point yeah, very and much. Exactly. So, very um, accessible, a great quality sip for a great price. Mm. Mm. So that's the story behind our Ming Chen. So the Ming Chen is still accurate. It just means picked before tomb sweeping day, which mm. is around the early April, usually mm -hmm. April the fifth ish, around that day. And I think because because this tea is one of the ones that is mm -hmm. the earlier the better is one of the sort of monikers with it. It's mm -hmm. a good time to talk about a an article. I think in the in the twenty eighteen Charan magazine. I mm -hmm. think we have an article where we go over sort of what does this mean. Or nineteen, I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> check, check out which Cha, it's in one of the Charan mm. magazines, which are available free on our website. Mm -hmm. And there's a really good article if you want to dive into just. What is important? If you want to go a little bit deeper, yes. in general, yes. that's still a, a good rule that you can follow if you just get into tea yep. and uh, you know, talking about drinking tea and not interested in learning like too much. Right. As, you know, uh, so that's still a great uh, rule to follow. But right. if you want to know a little bit more about the, uh, uh, you know, the industry, the true facts, uh, and a yep. little bit in depth look at uh, what's going on, what has been changed. Right. Uh, check out that article in China yeah. Magazine. I love that article. She wrote it. It's excellent. Mm. <laughs> so then further down there, we get into um, the one bud, no problem, Card of Lotus. I get it. They have a cute name for it. But then the bud and the leaf, the flag and the gun, I'm like, I couldn't, 
I couldn't figure that out. Like I'd never seen uh -huh. a piece of tea that looks like a, a gun. Okay. <laughs> and okay. Okay. Let's uh, back up to the very uh, beginning because okay. here there are three, not grades, mentioning three uh, title names pretty specific to this tea. Mm. Lian Xin, uh, yes, please open the link uh, below in the description box. Right, to the we finished have translation. The, to the finished yeah. translation where I put the pinyin so you can see. Lian Xin, Lotus Seeds Heart. Uh, you know, Lotus Seeds. Right. The heart of Lotus Seeds. Mm -hmm. So it's a little green uh, thing. It's bitter. A li the little green and yeah. the seed. But right? if you, do, you sleep with a lot of drink, have some of those, even though it's bitter, it's good. Uh, <laughs> it's good stuff. You should take some of those. Yeah, I know. I had a nightmare recently. Yeah, yeah, okay. Anyway, so that means it's just one bud. Uh, and second mm -hmm. one is not gun. It's a spear. Ah. Spear. Oh, Tra that's quite different. Now I can picture it, right? The bud is probably like a spearhead. Yes. Because the bud is usually a pointy yes. little... Sh yeah, not quite. If like you talk part. about gun, like okay. a, in Chinese, the bows are known as a chiang. Right, but there's a time frame. You talk about modern chow, nobody use spear anymore. Right. But those are old terms. They mean all times what 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 weapon is a chow? That's a spear. It's a long stuff. Got it. A spear and the flag. Okay. So you that can imagine like a one bud and one leaf. Yes. Kind of kind shape. Kind of the flag, and you even see those like sometimes on parade. They've got the yes. flag on the spear as a decoration or whatever. Yes. Yes. And the third one is <laughs> one leaf. I love this. With uh, two, oh no, sorry, one bud with two leaves. Right. Right. So you probably heard that yeah. sparrow's tongue or S tongue of sparrow. How do you say that? Sparrow's tongue, but sparrow's the, tongue. it's the Stellaria. I didn't even think of that Stellaria. when I read Stellaria uliginosa. I thought it was uh, like some. Hey, sort would that of, be easier for Spanish to like uh, I don't relate know. this? Maybe probably easier to La pronounce for us. It sounds like Latin. Ah, oh, right. But uh, it's, they're pretty close. Well, not really, but... Anyways, whoa. so that's a sparrow that town, has. which means, mm. you know, like a, a two beak with a little tongue in the middle. So, right. you know, one bud, the tongue is the bud, the leaves are the beak. Right. Okay, great. So that was, um, that was that paragraph. Next, appreciation before drinking. Honestly, this one was pretty good. Um, um, didn't find anything too hard to de to sort of decode in here. Um, you're mm -hmm. talking about the character of the dry leaf. The bud is mm -hmm. in the leaf and shorter than three centimeters. This was pretty straight up. Yeah. And then. Mm. Taste, not anything else that you caught there that. Because I, it looked right. pretty straight, unless it's, there was something sort of hidden. Mm, it's not quite a uh, hidden. Like uh, this two paragraph, I, I, this two section of the T, I think it's good to give people a rough idea of how they look like and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I also suggest not to go too, uh, too stick to the textbook kind right. of. A, uh, to examine the real uh, T in real life, you can. Um, you know, because there's still vast grades of it, right? And uh, they're different. But uh, uh, just to talk about paragraph two, appreciation always before drinking. Mm -hmm. It kind of says the out the, the the look, right? And here is the color of dry leaves. Authentic uh, the tea tea language is a brown rice color. Brown, what is that? brown rice color? Yeah, what does that mean? It's a Xihu real, not say real, a more traditional Xihu Longji has yellowish green. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that there are tea vendors saying when they introduce Longji, it's a jade green or something. Uh, or bright green. You sometimes yeah. see these really booming, yes. almost neon green. Yeah, it wouldn't taste good. <laughs> Sorry to be blunt, but it wouldn't taste good. No, those are really practical tips for people. But you can people. still like buy those. If you like a grassy flavor, if you see that color, right. guaranteed gra very grassy, very uh, vegetal. Yeah. If you are into that, don't care. You know, you don't have to care about for what sure. we say or anything. But I think it's a good point because when you're getting into tea and you learn about green tea and you learn a little bit about kill green and how it preserves the bright green, 
Yeah. It's easy to gravitate towards that. But in, yes. the, in the case of a good longjin, you want that yellowish green, yellowish yes. green. Uniform, flat. And uh, here is an interesting thing. I don't know. He says uh, the bud uh, grows in the... What's the original? The bud is in the leaf and shorter than three yes. centimeters. Mm. It's not a bud in the leaf. Bud is always in the leaf. It's the same Chinese. If uh, pronounce the same character, different uh, different pronunciation, uh -huh. different meaning. But it actually just means the buds are longer than leaves. Mm -hmm. But so it tells you the le the minimum of the buds. And what's the maximum of the uh, the buds? No longer than three centimeters okay so it seems very specific right and how the leaf, a little bit precise a little bit <laughs> precise the buds and the leaves uh, form that little how do you call that the here? Uh, flag spear no 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 here is that uh, even in flower shaped what means is a cluster this kind of area if I just translate it it kind of uh, tells you the season if you do gardening you will uh. notice uh, same plant, just this plant in different spring, autumn, right. uh, summer. The leaf, the buds, their relationship because of the, the sun, the spacing, humidity, everything. Everything mm. it changes. So that would, um, that's how we uh, observe uh, the dry leaves and know. Oh, this is a summer tea. Oh, this is or a, a spring tea. Spring tea, right. or this is from this kind of a. So uh, the spacing region. between the bud and the leaf are pretty close. Something like that. Rather than but, have a big stem in between. But I'm not. Right. Uh, again, I don't want to talk into Specifics. too much detail right. just to give you guys a little idea of okay, what are the dry leaves you could right. get information from and maybe in future so when, we, uh, when we have a more tasting and stuff, we will have leaves for you to look at that mm. would be more straight up. Now just insert the idea. <laughs> That's right. Introduce the idea and right. uh, kind of decode it from the paragraph here. Yes. And uh, for the uh, the enjoying while tasting section. And the, bases, I think, means stems, right? You don't want broken pieces, yes. fragments, and stems. Yes. So in the enjoying and while tasting section, mm -hmm. uh, I, I just want to point out a kind of a different, you notice there's not much tasting notes at all. <laughs> this is a Chinese style of describing right. things. So if we translate to the more Western style of understanding, Longjing, you would have a little bit roasted. We call that uh, uh, cook, cook chestnut flavor. Mm. So it's a, uh, or with a little bit roasting, a little bit gentle roastiness because it's a pan fried, a little, maybe a little soy, 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 soybean, soybean. Mm. And what else you should add? This is your right. part. No, you kind of covered it. That creamy, roasty chestnut mm -hmm. aroma. Um, I do. I find it hard to describe the the bright, fresh flavor too that you get with it. Mm. It's not a green, grassy flavor, but it does right. have a really uh, eye-opening, refreshing right. um, uh, mixed in with that that chestnut aroma. It's mm -hmm. just uh, it's just delightful. Right. So let's head over and see about some comments. Mm -hmm. Where are we? Is that the Qingming, Qingming Festival? Festival? Yes. 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 Yeah. The, the tomb sweeping day, right? What's yes. the Qingming? Tomb? Qingming, yeah. And, uh, oh, hey, welcome, uh, Moises yes. Philippe Lima. I'm glad I found this channel. We're glad you found it too. Welcome to yes, the, welcome. Welcome to the uh, Sunday Tea Book. And, um, Hola, no. Hola, no. No. I, I'm not sure. Okay. I don't know. But uh, yeah, cool. I guess and, that it wasn't easy to pronounce for them. Mm. The Sparrow, the oh, official be, name of be, Sparrow. I think that was the one. Josh says, also, while we're here on Lom Jing Day, I, was, <laughs> I like that. We should make this International Lom Jing Day now. Also, while we're here on Lom Jing Day, I was wondering, how do you guys avoid oversteeping while making in a tumbler? I always have so much trouble with that. That's mm. a pretty good question. Yeah, that's, that's a really, a really good, question. good question. And um, he, he says, I was guessing it would be sparrow's tongue because the top tier Korean tea called Wujian means sparrow's tongue and also referenced the picking. Mm -hmm. For me, the delicious flesh cream aroma flavor really reminds me of the fresh, crisp, bitter, oh, butter lettuce. 
I think he meant butter lettuce. I think that's What's a kind of lettuce? lettuce. I don't know, but I don't <laughs> think he means bitter lettuce. Probably. Let's get back to that question because this is good. If you like to have your green mm. tea uh, in a tumbler, which is pretty much how it's drunk in, uh, in China, mm -hmm. filter with your teeth style, then the question is good. How do you prevent that from oversteeping? Mm -hmm. And the answer is kind of timing and leaf amount, right? You throw in some leaf. And you can check, we have some great videos on, actually we have a video on how to brew Lom Jin. You can check it out. It's also in the description mm. down below. And I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm pretty sure we cover tumbler brewing in that video. Usually we do, we, for, we do a lot of that. Yeah. But in general, any tumbler brew, brew two ways. De depends on the tumbler size, right? Mm. Three measurements to play with. Leaf amount, tumbler size, and water temperature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, like if it's a small tumbler, less leaf. If you want a lower temperature, we usually mm -hmm. just use a hot water, boiling, yeah. boiling water. We just watch the leaf amount. Leaf amount is what we play with the most. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, he loves the long the tumbler I, for a long time. I really love it. Because, it, okay, so I'm going to explain. Okay. So if I'm just drinking it, I put in a, a reasonable leaf amount, which is a bit less than normal for the water amount because it's going to sit there. So it's a little easy on the leaf and I'm, I get, I'm not going to give you a measurement because I eyeball it every single time and you've got to dial this into your preference. Mm. Uh, then I put the boiling water and guess what? I cannot drink that for a good five minutes. It's too hot. So that's why I'm easy on the leaf amount. So by the time I can drink it, I'm timing it so that, oh, by the time <clears throat> I'm sipping, pretty delicious. I have some sips and when I get about halfway down, it starts to get bitter, <coughs> just warm it up again and then boom, the bitterness dissolves. But what she's talking about is a little different. It's when I do a grab and go in a thermos, I throw that in and go and it just sits there. Mm -hmm. Then I'm, again, easy on the leaf, let it sit there all day mm -hmm. and the flavor comes out. It's like this matcha-y with the roasted soy, but it picks up this matcha-y deliciousness. Like it's almost like a, like a matcha chiffon in a, in a tumbler, liquid form. I just love Lom Jin in a travel thermos, which, I, which might be a little bit lowbrow, but I'm telling you, if you, if you tweak the leaf amount, mm -hmm. it is so good. Mm. So there, that, there's that. I How hope that much helps leaf? Josh. He usually put a five to six grains. Oh, job in the in a tumbler. Mm. Oh, depends yeah. on the, how big. It does is depend on how big. It really that, matters. But, so here is the thing, right? We have about this height the tumbler. Mm. You're talking about the twenty the, centimeter the grab and go bottle. Yeah, that's nine fifty mil. That's oh nine fifty mil. That's not okay. a tumbler. <laughs> oh, that's a, like a, a travel bottle. Okay, travel mug is a different thing, right? Kind of, yeah. I mean, it's a similar technique though. Right. You gotta you gotta look at the out. shape. Usually, I say lightly cover the yeah. the bottom, mm -hmm. but you know, if we have a really uh, wide wide or something, mm -hmm. you just try it. But yeah, yeah. So three grams. Start with three grams, probably. Definitely, After the yeah. Five or six grams sounds too much. I think your it. trick to just lightly cover the bottom it mm. really works well for me. For traditionally, tumblers have this ratio. They're pretty straight. Right, they're straight up, and uh, if you just lightly cover the bottom with leaf and go with, uh, you know, go with good hot water. I don't know which kind of. If you're using our not lum gin, just mm -hmm. pour your boiling water on it, and when it's ready to drink, it's going to be good. Yeah. All right. So delicious fresh green. Good. So we'll come back to uh, green spiral time. No, we have a section to do before oh, that. Oh, I don't know. Sorry, I don't have the page up yet, so I might have got ahead of myself. Here we go. Okay. So there's a big section here on gear and brewing, which we're going to refer to the video. Mm -hmm. um, but there is, let me just find the page. So we have a video, again, the link is down in the description for how to brew it. So we're mm -hmm. not gonna go over all the brewing details here because they're really well covered in that video. Mm -hmm. But there's this one. I'm sure a lot of you have come across this, uh, this tradition of bending fingers instead of kneeling. So I'm gonna give this a read and we'll go over this. Bend fingers instead of kneeling down. While serving tea to the guest, who should put his forefingers and middle finger together and bend a little, tap the tea table twice to show his appreciation. This is a special ceremony to show thanks, which is said originated from the period of Qianlong Emperor of Qing Dynasty. Can I have a sip? Thank you. 
When Emperor Tianlong, went, this is cute, went to the south, once he disguised as a servant. Okay, this is really dramatic. <laughs> the group went to a tea house. The owner gave the teapot to Tianlong and let him serve for the eunuch who dressed up like a host. Tianlong was excited to take up the teapot and serve tea. However, the eunuch was extremely frightened, but he could not kneel down to thank the emperor immediately. As a result, he put his forefinger and middle finger together and bend and tap the table gently. Gradually, the tea ceremony to thank had been spread out among the folk. No matter between the juniors and the seniors, or the subordinates and the upper level, even between the same group, they will tap the table gently with both fingers together to show their appreciation, or just tap the table twice instead of bending, which shows more intimate and courteous. So this is uh, such a fun little story. Mm. So in this section, um, the old, okay. and I really encourage you guys to go and check out the Finnish translation because this story, it's really cute, but and it is it's a little hard to get here. It's you can kind of get it, but it's it's such a fun story of the emperor disguising himself as a servant. I think that's pretty good the translation it's here. Totally pretty understandable, good. no? It's pretty good. The servant was the host is where it threw me off a bit because oh. he wasn't the host. It was just a flipping of roles. It wasn't a host. It was a master. He was the master, right? Yes. So it looks was, like a master because yeah. how he dressed. So oh, the tea okay, house okay. guy assume he's the master. If you even just that word kind of straightens it out. It's pretty good. But I think the the wording we chose, it's a little more like fun to read because there's less okay. decoding and you can just kind of get behind this sneaky little emperor dress up as his servant and so excited when he gets to actually brew some tea. Right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like if you like uh, stories and stuff, this is a nice story, but yeah. you probably heard uh, many other versions. Uh, key elements in all kinds of story is all Qianlong and Emperor Qianlong related. I'm just going to go to the tea table and show them. It should come up in a oh, moment, okay. hopefully. Not sure if the tea table will come. Checking it. Mm -hmm. Okay, forget about the tea table. Sorry, technical issue. Technical issue. I was a little nervous. It was slow when we were offline. I just wanted, oh, they can see my fingers. I just wanted to show us. Some oh, people right, right. might not know what we're talking about, right? It's just the little tap tap oh, right. with the uh, knuckles. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or sometimes just tap tap with the two Could fingers. Could be this, mm -hmm. right? But all you have different versions of the story. Usually, it all always include the Emperor Chenlo. It doesn't have to be eunuch. It could be his. Uh, sometimes it's his, uh, uh, like a official. It, it, so it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, Everybody's lower every than him. It's somebody lower status right. than him. Right, and who stuff. would be really kind of nervous about not showing proper respect to their master, right? Their right, emperor. Right. It's just a, basically you have a. There is not an official record that this right. is how this happened. You can have five similar <laughs> stories. Everybody's sure. like different. Yeah. But uh, that's the gist. It tells you uh, kind of that's where, when, roughly the timeline of this kind mm. of a Tradition manner comes out. Mm. Uh, in Chinese, we call that qu zhi dai gui, bend, bend fingers instead of kneeling. Mm. Qu zhi dai gui. Also sometimes known as like uh, the xie cha li, thank tea manner. Cool. Yeah. Xie cha li. And, uh, mm. So sometimes you might see people do even five fingers on the table or uh, <clears throat> like the full fist or stuff. Mm -hmm. And there are people who start to give different ways or if, with, if you are with uh, like say senior, you should do this, you should do that. Uh, personal thought is uh, it, it's overly unnecessarily specified Com about right. uh, how you do that. If you do that, that's the gist of it. People mm. know, okay, that's a thank you. And do you have to do this when people mm. are pouring tea for you? If you say thank you, would that work? Yes, it also works. <laughs> the whole right. idea is just to say thank you. you. Nobody will look at you and like, how could you say thank you and not, you right, know, right. knock on it. It's I totally, the spirit of the whole thing is deformalization, yeah. really, not That's the right. opposite, right? It's to kind yes. of make, we're drinking tea. It's just tea. to feel like if somebody serves you to, 
you know, oftentimes with Chinese tasting cup is small, so it's like every three minutes, a little pour, little pour. If you uh, kind of every time say thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, kind of feel a little bit of like a distancing. That's why in the end it feels right. intimate. It doesn't interrupt the conversation right, you right. are having. Mm. It doesn't give the people too formal idea, but yep. the host, the also receive that you appreciate this. It's you know just a gist. You say thank you. You say anything. It's or everything works like you know it's not yeah. a rigid you have to do yeah. that yeah hmm. all right so below chun mm -hmm. the moment you've all been waiting for green spiral <clears throat> Brewing difficulty, easy to learn, difficulty, three stars out of five, best tea tasting season, summer. Green Spiral is just after Dragon Well. Suzhou, Wuxian, Taihu Lake, Dongting Mountain divides into East and West Mountains. Mm. Pardon me. The, the tea that produced in the West Mountain is the best, still in the south of the Yangtze River. This area is really unique and eccentric. The tea deposits the longest culture and was given more than tea itself. As a result, it is extremely <coughs> expensive and hard to get. Good things, good names. Sounds like a commercial. Green Spiral is famous in the world for its beautiful appearance, bright color, strong fragrance, and mellow taste. This due to Emperor Kangxi in a large extent. Originally, Green Spiral is called Xia Sha Ren Xiang. While Kangxi made his rounds to Dongting in the south, he tasted the tea and could hardly tear himself away from the tea and asked for its name. After hearing the name, Kangxi thought it was an indelicate name and Kangxi Emperor gave it its name, Green Spiral, by its producing area, spiral shape, and picked in the early spring. From then on, Green Spiral became famous and as a royal tea. We know what happens when that happens. Popular. <laughs> Appreciation always before drinking. Characteristics of dry tea. Tea strips are slimy and the shape like spiral, full of cilia. White tips are exposed and in an aquamarine color and strong fragrance. The earlier picking, the more white tips, the tenderer. The green spiral tea is more or less with a flavor of fire. Otherwise, without the flavor of silver smell, it is not produced in Taihu Lake. Enjoying while tasting, the soup of Green Spiral is clear and aquamarine with a simple and elegant fragrance. It tastes fresh and mellow and makes you unforgettable. All right. Makes you unforgettable? Yeah, yeah. All we'll right. get to that, okay? I have a little note about that and I might even sing a little bit when that happens. Have a look at the uh, comment maybe? Sure thing. So before we unpack all the uh, the green spiral, we'll head over to the comments. Mm -hmm. Oh, Josh loved the story about the knee knock, the, uh, <laughs> knee tapping instead of kneeling. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think we're a bit higher. Uh, I definitely have watched the video the, the few times. Uh, cool. What leaf amount do you guys use? Yeah, start with three. I think you gave him that mm -hmm. already. Intuitive style. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's good for what I use. Nope. It's mm. good. It's what I use for 50 mil guy one. Hmm, perhaps I'll reduce my leaf to half and find a bigger tumbler. Today with a higher leaf water ratio, I had to reduce my attempt to about 65 to 70, mm. but now it's great. Wow. That's huge. And mine is way smaller. Okay, ratio oh, sounds the way. I got mixed up with the trouble mug. <laughs> no, that's okay. Like it's the, it's the exact same technique. Yeah. It's, it's the, just scale up a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I really love the emperor story and how, keep in mind, I love your point. It informalizes the whole I'm thing. I'm really cold-blooded. <laughs> I often strip down all the stories because it's, you know, I don't know. It's like sometimes it's in our culture, love to make some stories. Yeah, no, it, I think it's good. And the translation we clearly refer. Oh, it's good. Now you have two versions. You have my cold version and this warmer version with uh, right. vivid uh, images. Yeah. And it, we, it's, it's less clear in the book here that it's a legend. It's really clear in our translation that this is a legend. It's not really something you're going to call out as a historical happening. Um, I've also heard rumors that the taps twice because the two taps symbolize the 
syllables of sissy. Okay. Could be. I see. It's like a it's like a bow. Yes. Mm. Yes. That's exactly sort of the spirit of the legend, right? It's yeah. like he can't bow because the emperor will be upset with him. He'll blow his cover, right? He's trying to have a little fun as a disguise as a servant, right? We even have a TV series about the, you know, <laughs> I use a lot about of that Simon? so much. Yeah, all those emperors who love to disguise as normal people, mm. maybe a you know a merchant or some people, and uh, just uh, you know see mingle where, with the public and yeah, and mm. uh, discover there's a bad uh, you know local officers and stuff like that, and with a really handsome finish that uh, the troops come and rescue and stuff like that. Anyway, it's, it's a really fun. I love that as a kid. Josh also heard if you tap with one finger, it means you're single. <laughs> Okay, well, if that's working for you, dude, keep it up. I mean, that sounds like a great, like of all the augmentations yeah. we heard, at least that's still pretty informalizing and kind of send a little signal. Yeah, I saw people do that with one finger too. Right. I didn't know. Oh, I love you're that. single. Hey, Cookie8506, welcome. Hello there. And Ronan, I was unsure if I should be after every cup. I think it would be in the future tap after the first cup or so and then stop. Yeah, ah. sure. Yeah, you can do every cup too. Tap is pretty fluid. It doesn't really interrupt anything. So yeah. you can always throw that in. Mm -hmm. It's just an interesting culture thing. Is saying thank you a whole lot in Chinese is um, sort of weird. It's not like English culture, English like British culture is the opposite. Sorry and thank you and excuse me are mm. prolific in our day-to-day -day speech. Mm. In Chinese, those make you feel like a stranger. So it's quite different. So you Cultural difference. Mm -hmm. Like we yes. really care about... Uh, Thank you. Like we often say, it's like your, <laughs> it's a, you know, watch for the action, not the words. We often mm. say that. That's why for us, like, I was uh, thinking sometimes, like, uh, people will say, oh, the Chinese don't say enough thank you. They don't say enough of mm. things because our culture is not as expressive. Like, imagine if you're, uh, uh, say, uh, maybe in the West, your mom make a big dish, and when you place, you say, oh, thank you. Right, that's mm. the Western uh, manner, and in the Chinese way, we probably wouldn't say thank you to our parents in that uh, formal, like uh, mm. written the very strict way. But we would probably say, "Oh, this is so delicious," and uh, have something so good and finish the whole plate. That's mm. for us is like the best way to say thank you, not to say Notice thank some you of the and, and stuff, right? Yeah, and, point and out uh, left the whole plate untouched. That's no mm. matter how many thank you you say, we don't think. We think it's just, oh, you're being polite and not right. sincere. Right, exactly. So uh, cultural difference and how to express certain um, emotions. Oh, no. Mm? Cookie just ran out of tea and is very sad. That is sad times, okay? <laughs> um, there's a link to the Not Lom Jin in the description below. You could order some. We'll get it out to you as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. That is sad times. Josh says, I mean, I'm not sure if these are true or common, but I've heard both in a few different tea places. Yeah, you know, it's a really informal thing. Like people, like you said earlier too, Jen, like people are changing it and kind of mutating it. That's the beautiful thing about it. So probably could be something that happens. Mm. Of course, all of these things, the stories are, ooh, apocryphal but just get super fun anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like even the story of Da Hong Pao with all the details super long and involved war of celestials and immortals. Oh yeah, really? that's, yeah, I don't know, but that sounds like a really oh. fun story. All right, I'm gonna head back over to the book. We're gonna unpack Green Spiral. So, East and West Mountain Tea. I was, um, the beginning is a little bit, you know, it's sort of like the Bible here. There's this long string of Suzhou, Wushan, Danting Mountain divides into east and west. Mm. And I think it's, uh, they have a west mountain as well, which is better. But I'm not sure about that. I think that's what you I got can, out of that. You got a gist of that. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So, uh, Bi Luo Chun comes from Suzhou. Uh, Suzhou, now it's a city. Underneath that, more specific, originally known as Wuxian. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay. this is as actually how should i say uh, english order should be dongting mountain the dongting mountains comma wuxian wu county comma suzhou that's ah, the ah. head of the order right right, right. um uh just a little note of here because uh, 
Sometimes we say, where is the tea originated? There's a historical, there's stuff like a current, mm -hmm. you know, the borders of a county and city first. So we know they change, not to mention in history, they could have quite changed. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes you will see uh, uh, like originally from there, there. Right. Maybe currently it's a situation is from another country. Oh, right. Because that kind there's of been thing. some political change. It's a long in the history. Landscape. It's a right. long history. Right. It comes and goes and changes. But right. in that region, Suzhou, there's not mm -hmm. much debate there. Dongtingshan area, there's not, not too much debate. And there's a west mountain and east mountain. It's on a little island, kind of. Oh, yeah, it's really, really pretty. Yeah, and again, it's a Jiangnan, the area we just mentioned, the, the Jiangsu Zhejiang right. area. They mentioned the Yangtze again, but it's the same comment, right? Yeah. It's not quite bang on, it's just yeah. that. This is from Jiangnan. Jiangsu province, uh, Longjing is from Zhejiang province. Mm. Yeah. So. so, this sentence too, the tea deposits the longest culture. Whoops, let me get rid of that scribble, that was an accident. Mm -hmm. The tea deposits the longest culture and was given more than tea itself. This one I couldn't decode. This is a, what it says is a, say similar to Longjing, which again is name and fame because ah. of some, first it's a, long, a, a tea with a long history and also it's kind of a, touched by human god, emperor. Right, the emperor, okay, you know? okay, that was not... Celebrity effect. Right, right, and that comes out down here in the next paragraph. Um, we talk about how it got its name and it comes down to another emperor. Mm -hmm. One thing I didn't get in here was he didn't like the name and they give us the pinyin name here, which is kind of ironic because this the book is a little bit notorious for translating the pinyin names, but they just left it Xia Sha Ren Xiang. We Who could do this? I it's, don't know why If it's it can be name. translated, right, right. He, uh, she translates it. If it cannot be translated easily, she put the, uh, yeah. the pinyin. But unfortunately, we lose why that name was ugly because it's never divulged. We yeah. only know that it's... Again, check on the link. I put that. I think I said something like uh, scarily aromatic. Right. It's a little bit frighteningly and because of the word is a very local uh, colloquial colloquial okay. like a, like a little bit dialect ish of mm. a calling so it's pretty rough it's like oh this is a, you know freaking delicious yasha xiang style kind of <laughs> kind of you know like uh, you can put those kind of emphasizing words it's like a freaking aromatic Right. You know, so it's not very. Oh, that's I love actual, that. That's, not, that's, that's what it should be. Freaking, let's change yeah, it to freaking. Freaking, uh, yeah. freaking aromatic. Yes. All right. So the emperor hear the name and he's like, hmm, that's mm. not going to work. I want this to be an imperial tea, but. Right. We want that to have elegant name. Elegant name. Right. Again, for English speaker, you probably don't understand why is a green sp spiral. Green right. spiral, and very. Green spiral spring or something, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. So it doesn't even sound good. That's what I was going to say. Right. It ends up not even sounding that good. It's better to keep yeah. this below chun. Uh, two irrelevant stuff, just if you want to know. First, who is the Emperor Kangxi? It's also from Qin Dynasty, the grandpa of Emperor Qianlong. Uh, oh, it's back a little bit. Mm, a little bit early. Ah. In which case, uh, it's like below chun is slightly earlier, uh, famous mm -hmm. earlier than Longji. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, another thing is uh, later on, this one points out on. Uh, did oh, it didn't point out. It didn't point out to the name. Why is it Bi Luo Chun, right? Oh, Bi Luo is also the mountain. Here is the thing. Uh, oh, wow. How should I say? So we that was have... missed here in English. It's missed. Yes. Okay. Well, that's really important. I wanna. Uh, so. The Himalayas is the mountains, right? The Himalayan mountains. The yeah, Everest, the yeah. you also call mountain. That is a mountain, yeah. Right. So in Chinese, there's two words. Mountain, shan, could be mountains, like a range. A range. And it also can be individual mountain. Right. There's another word called feng, F-E-N-G. Mm. When you hear that, it's not a mountain. It can be it's only the peak. Okay. The peak of uh, it can, and it also means mountain. When you hear say, uh, we can call Everest Feng, we can mm. never call uh, Himalayas Feng right. because that's a range. So when so again, kind of like a mount. Yeah, Mount a, Royal is always a mount. 
Oh, okay. okay I guess Mount, that would be okay. similar, right? A Mount okay. Everest, Mount Royal, but cannot yes. be arranged. Yes, and in a lot of times talking about Chinese teas, uh, the translation sometimes they put S, sometimes don't. But a lot of times it's a mountain range we're talking about, like mm. this Dongting Shan. It's Dongting Mountains. That's how you could have West and East. It's right. a little bit, a little, a cluster of mountains mm. kind mm. of thing. Right. And this one comes from Bi Luo Feng, means that peak called Bi Luo. Got it. Bi means green, like jade is green. Mm -hmm. Luo is a spiral, but it actually is a snail kind of shape. Snail shell, right? Yeah, yeah, mm. like that spiral shape. And Chun means spring. Mm -hmm. Start to be more beautiful when you hear it like that rather than green spiral. Mm. It's just not, it's more elegant in, uh, in and Chinese. And uh, you probably would have heard some. A legends about this. There's a beautiful girls. Usually, when it comes to tea, I don't know why, but a lot of legends include beautiful girls save people's life or meet a handsome like a. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh knows why. Single finger one. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. Tea is a great. You great know. Way to pick up. It says Bilo is the name of some. <laughs> Bilo is the name of some uh, girls and stuff. Uh, girls or elf. Of something. Anyway, too many versions. Legends, legends abound. Mm. Okay, back to the appreciation then. So that's good. So something was missed in that section in terms of the the name detail. So I'm glad we got that out. And again, nothing is missed in the finished translation. So you mm. can always check that out. Um, so appreciation always before drinking. Uh, Slimmy, I just always have to pick on these funny. Uh, these funny, so the, the, the dry leaf is uh, slim and spiral shaped, not slimy, They're just so cute. And cilia is not, um, that could be like, uh, we can figure out that's the fuzz, uh -huh. but those are actually, like, um, it's probably better to use the word fuzz. Uh, cilia are more like usually on organisms, not on plants. Okay. Or trichome, if you want to be super nerdy like me. Um, and the, uh, so those were my two observations. The rest is pretty okay, like the white tips, and if it's the younger it is, or the, sort of the earlier it's plucked, sorry, the more white tips you mm -hmm. get and tenderer, that's another sort of green teaism. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but here we have the flavor of fire. Mm. This and is a tricky. This is really hard to understand. So uh, yeah. something to do with roast. Otherwise, without the flavor of silver smell, no, it's the not, translation is wrong. It's really hard to figure it out means what's going it, on here. It means it has that uh, flavor of fire. It's a huo It's a. It's not burnt. It's mm. not roasty. But you know, it has the. It's the, pan fried, the depth, right? So right. it has that pan fried element. And but uh, but if you start to have a silver needle kind of notes in it, it means it's not produced in Taihu. Taihu is the lake. Oh. So it kind of a, this is a, you know a pretty specific. But for most people who drink tea, they probably wouldn't don't need to go so much in depth. Right. And um, mm, so because it's so fuzzy, it can pick up that. Um, Silver needle flavor, but not if it's the authentic one. Mm. That's the idea. Because the process is different. Right. But however, I just want to uh, mention some, uh, just to point out, if you are choosing a Biluochun, like Longjing and Biluochun are expensive teas. As mentioned in the book, they have a lot mm. of like, a, a, how do you call that? Like a, a, the overflow it, value because of the yeah, brand. Yeah, it goes beyond the tea now because yeah. of the, it's these like have been a famous Louis for so bags. It goes right. beyond bags, yeah, yeah. right? That kind of thing. So um, those are expensive. And for Bi Luo Chun, if you are gonna spend a good money on that, of getting a really uh, expensive or authentic, and the same with the Bi Luo Chun and uh, Long Jing, going to the origin doesn't guarantee you anything, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? Then you could be watching them pan fry and just one moment reach down for your wallet, your tea got sw swapped. So those are very kind of uh, things. Unfortunate, but it happens. Yes. So, uh, but if you're just a customer who wants to try something really uh, high-end and stuff for Bi Luo Chun, uh, you can, a very simple, Good, uh, sim the simplest tip is if it's a really expensive 
below Chun, you have to look for a lot of fuzz. A lot right. of fuzz, almost like a dust bunny. Yeah, okay, it's, it's almost ugly. not pretty, huh? Yes, mm. it's ugly. It's so fuzzy. Mm -hmm. It's and it's mini. The leaves are so mini and little mm -hmm. and curly and fuzzy. So mm -hmm. if looking from afar, it's not even greenish. It's a silver gray because of mm -hmm. the fuzz. Mm -hmm. That's better. If you are looking for something that is green because it's a green spiral, however, then that's a lower grade. Okay. Mm. If it's a gray because of that fuzz, it's the good one. The more fuzz, the more yep. value. Value. And, yeah. The higher grade it will be. Yep. Don't use a filter with that one. Yeah. Those fuzz are yummy. Yeah. Because I'm seeing lots of uh, expensive ones just by the look of it. It's not uh, that uh, quality at all. Right. And in the last one, the enjoy while tasting, um, I've got to point out that it will, if you serve one of the real ones, it will make you unforgettable. Your guests will love you because the flavor, I remember we got it. We had uh, Bilo Chun in a while ago. We're mm -hmm. obviously sold out. Um, but the link to the, uh, there's a blog post about it because you were actually there. Yeah, um, like a couple of years, uh, couple of four years, years ago, a actually, ago, we yes. did a batch of uh, handmade, mm. authentic uh, Bi Luo Chun. We were in that we got up at a, uh, six and uh, we followed the whole process mm. from the beginning to the end to plucking and everything. So we didn't let the batch of tea leave our vision for even mm. one second. And we that even do so authentic. Like, uh, you know, sometimes people tell you, oh, those are pan fried tea, you pan fry and it's done. That's, that's a modern talk, not at all. Green tea has the uh, return rose or return stuff. Every tea has, there is no one step tea authentically. Right. Right. There's always right. a second step. And we right. did that and the tea is just amazing. We, uh, the most of the tea was sold to in China. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of our customer was like, I was having this tea with tear. I haven't had any mm. Bilo Chun taste like that right. for decades. I so, had tears too for a different reason because yes. it was my first experience with such a... It's a uh, pinnacle grade and mm. we picked, uh, it was from the West, uh, East Mountain, uh, East Mountain tea, not the West mm -hmm. Mountain. And uh, we had a, a, a few, uh, very, a few, several, it's a really small quantity that we left here for sale and went out mm -hmm. super fast. But that tea was, and again, people think it's so tender, so early, you cannot use boiling water. Mm -mm. You put that in the tumbler, you use boiling water, it's sweet. And the yes. oh, so tasting, sweet. No, uh, tasting notes in terms of uh, this, Bi Luo Chun has milder, mm -hmm. gentle, or um, uh, not say more elegant, but really, uh, it is a not it's more like a subtle nourishing kind of mm -hmm. profile sophisticated yes. elegant those are yes. the right and words sweet and with a little bit of like a delight fruity delight for mm. it rather than really you can pinpoint which fruit it's more mm. like a, have that a more delight cheerful nose right and that elusive f uh, fruitiness the, i find the good teas are always hard to nail down specifics but mm. you just feel so good we still get the emails asking if that below train is coming back. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. So that covers uh, below Chun. The um, the rest are brewing That's details. It. We have uh, we have great videos on how to brew green tea and brewing. And uh, also, you mentioned about the uh, about the water temperature. When uh, that made me think of our water temperature video. There's that's a, mm. there's another great video about that. I'll, I, it's not in the links down below yet, but I will add it because that's a great mm. lesson in how to understand boiling water vis-a-vis -vis quality tea, and what does boiling water mean for tea. Mm. So let's head over and uh, just before we say goodbye and sign out with you guys, we'll see if there mm -hmm. is any questions, comments, and just basically touch base. So, um, every cup, I think of a future tap. Right, right. Thank you, Hong Pao. Right, right, right. Ha ha. Tap with fingers as I say, give me more. <laughs> you were, you, I, I, I like have, that version. I have to admit, I sometimes, <laughs> you've noticed, I kind of convert that too. You're, I'm tapping the table and you're like, oh, oh right. that, that's not. No, no, no. This is, what you said is right, as you, like, you explained. Yes, and sometimes it's mesh up like a different areas mm -hmm. even have yes, different yes. there's a some area it could be like i'm tapping means keep pouring that's mostly for alcohol or oh, that's mostly for alcohol also possibly for tea right keep pouring keep, keep pouring, pouring and then, then when you, you stop tap, it's like they stop 
Right. Mm. But in Chinese culture, we usually when you stop, we pour extra. Your host will keep going. <laughs> yes.、Wow. But yeah, 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 that has the feeling too. Cookie says,、um, "I'd love to, but I'm only 14, so I don't have money to sleep around." <laughs> awesome. Makes handmade、uh, yeasting teapot. Oh, cool. Style. Oh, cool. Oh, that's really cool. Fourteen and、awesome. drinking tea and getting a yeasting teapot.、Yeah. That's awesome. Well, welcome to the channel, and、uh, that's a great, a great healthy start to your beverage.、Uh, I was gonna say better than Coke. Better than Coca Cola <laughs> and、uh, all the alternatives. Josh says, "Hi, I never heard anything like that about saving lives." Or, oh, I forget what that was in reference to. Was that、oh. those fantastic stories? Yeah. yeah oh, the, the, the girls, uh, the, uh, right? Yeah, the yeah, tea learning、uh, kind of a thing. I did hear the surprising fragrance name was because some young ladies were picking the tea and storing it、um, in their well. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh. Cleavage. I guess I don't know, which is an odd story. LOL. And the emperor thought it was、uh, a story with too much impropriety for the original imperial tea. But I mean, who knows? Yeah, it's all <laughs> sort of legends, and、huh. the, sort of the more fun and colorful they are, the more fun it is. No wonder, because some I remember once I saw a company hire a tea company. You know, hire a bunch of、uh, you know. Uh, the models and wear bikinis and pluck in tea. I was like headache, headache. <laughs> <laughs> But I guess it helps though. Great marketing. All right, guys. So that wraps up this edition of、mm -hmm. uh, Sunday Tea Book. Thank you for joining us. Yes.、Um, a little sneak peek to next week is I'll head up to the table of contents to check. <laughs> Next week we have coming up.、Uh, <laughs> I love the translated names.、Yeah. Yellow Mountain Fuzz Tip. You know it's easy to translate, right? That's right. <laughs> Mung Ding Du, and I think we're gonna squeeze in、uh, Lu,、uh, Luan Guapian,、uh, Luan Leaf Tea as well. Those are、um, so. Come on back next week for more green tea fun. Yes.、Um, and until next time. Oh, I'm no. Gonna, I'm gonna plug my.、Oh. Yes. I'm gonna、okay. plug my thing once more. October twenty second.、Um, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Eastern on a Thursday. I'm going to be doing exploring Chinese tea, where I'm going to kind of, in broad strokes,、uh, go over kind of the whole situation: brewing gear, tea types, production style, like how how it's produced,、mm. a little bit of history, a little bit of everything. Yes,、uh, it's a great review.、Um, great for tea lovers who are already quite savvy. Great for new people. It's going to be a really、mm. a really fun evening.、Mm -hmm. Get your kettles on for that. Yes, and、um, you know, grab your tea if you have a great weather. It's a、mm -hmm. great time. I know,、uh, at least for us, we're back to stage two quarantine again. But I think to keep our spirit up, we're going out for a trail walk, and I hope、yes. you guys are having. Some fresh air and enjoying、yeah. the tea outdoors. Get out there and stay、mm. healthy.、Uh, please, if、and、you do, and share with us your pictures. Yes, if you, you I was going to say, if you do have time、that. and you are the Instagram or Twitter or Facebook type, tag us in your pictures.、Mm. Uh, we'd love to see what you're drinking,、mm. how you're brewing it, what your innovations are around、mm -hmm. travel mugs and just getting out there and having fun with tea.、Um, we also hashtag Gong Fu anywhere too if you're Gong Fu style out、yes. in the wild. Absolutely. All right, guys. So until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.、Uh, <laughs> what is that? I'm looking for the、uh, closer. Okay, keep steeping. <laughs>